Supernova, Ricky Doyle, episode one of The Dish. This is your inaugural episode of our baseball show. I am Excited? jacked up. I am, I am jacked up jacked as up. well. And especially, Ricky, because now about a quarter into the MLB season, this Boston Red Sox team, really hot right now, which is refreshing when you compare it to the past couple of seasons, the starts of the past few seasons. Yeah, they're pretty good. I mean, it looks like for the first time in three years, we're actually going to have some meaningful baseball being played in the summer in Boston. So uh, that's certainly something to be excited about in this area. And uh, I think, you know, it was a lot of excitement going into the season, especially when you consider all the new additions who uh, many of them making an impact so far. Right. And I'm going to be talking with Steve Lyons in a little bit, and we'll be actually, I'm going to get him to grade those new additions and talk about how much they've helped this team. And then also our very own Mike Cole and Nicholas Goss going to be predicting whether they think the Sox will put up the big numbers that they look like they're on pace to put up this season. Yeah, those guys are kind of legends. So you're going to want to stick around. And Ricky, I'm just not ready for Big Poppy to retire. No, neither am I. And I'm starting to think he's not even human. Um, yeah. Obviously, what he's doing at age 40 is pretty, pretty special, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that, I'm sure. Yeah, well, Sam Galanis is contemplating what the rest of us are contemplating. Should Ortiz reconsider retirement? But first, Ricky, what are three things you've learned about the Red Sox so far this season? First thing I've learned so far this season is that Jackie Bradley Jr. is legit. Just had that 29-game hitting streak, which came to an end. But still, what we learned throughout the process was that this guy can hit. He can rake. And uh, we knew going into this season that his defense was going to be there. But we had questions about his offense. He showed a little bit last season, particularly in August when he had that huge stretch. Now, do I think he's going to keep up the pace he's on right now? I'm not so sure about that. But as we've seen so far, he is a legitimate major leaguer when it comes to providing offensive production in addition to his great defense. Now, the second thing I've learned is that Hanley Ramirez finally gets it. Who knew? Last season was kind of a train wreck with this whole outfield experiment thing. Could have gone one of two ways this season with his transition to first base. Seems like he's buying into the whole team concept. He's playing well. He's hitting well. He's actually feeling his position pretty well. Uh, it just seems like Hanley's on a good, you know, he's in a good place right now. And finally, the third thing that I've learned about the Red Sox so far this season is that this formula works. So, you know, going into the last season and even the season before that, this team was built on offense, but the pitching wasn't there. Kind of the same story so far this season, but the difference is that this offense is good enough to mask the team's other deficiencies. I think that's going to hold up at least until October. Expect this team to make a playoff push. I'm here now with Steve Lyons, former Red Sox player and current analyst for Nesson. And Steve, I want to talk to you about the new additions to the Red Sox roster and how much they've contributed to the team's success yeah. so far this season. And if it's okay with you, I want to do it grade school style. <laughs> right. I, want to, I want you to give them... I never did well with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see how the players do in your book. I want you to give them a letter grade. And let's start with David Price, a guy who came into this season with very high expectations. Has he lived up to them? Well, I think I would say C plus right now. And I think that maybe that would surprise a lot of people because his numbers are good. His ERA has been high. We understand why that happened. I mean, obviously he didn't get off to the greatest start, but he was winning games. It's sort of like, you know, you start off a semester in school and you stumble out of the blocks a little bit. Maybe you mess around and you don't do so well on your grades, but we know at the end, at the end of that semester, he's going to be right there. So I would be really surprised if it's not, you know, B plus, A, A plus at the end of the season. Well, Craig Kimbrell's a guy who did stumble out of the blocks, but he's picked it up. How is he faring in the grade department right Well, now? I think he went home and his mom got really mad at him after that first test, so now he's been awesome since then. So maybe he got a C or a D on that first test, and now he's been A plus, A plus, A plus. This guy is the premier closer in the game. There's no question about it. Well, now Chris Young, the guy who's brought in to face left-handed pitchers, how's he doing in that role? He's done an excellent job as far as I'm concerned, and sort of the same thing. He got off to a slow start and I keep saying that he's had a tough time because he was supposed to be a platoon player in left field and that means when the lefties throw you get your chance to play and when the righties throw you know that it's going to be Brock Holt or someone else out there in left field but we didn't face any lefties for like a month we saw three guys so he went from being a platoon guy to being a bench player and that's a completely different scenario and I know about that I did it my whole life. Well Carson Smith a guy who's supposed to be a key piece in the Red Sox bullpen how much of a loss is this for him to be out for the rest of the season? You know, he, he gets an F in the category of life because it's not his fault. I mean, he's, he's great, but the injury and the surgery, he's gone for the year. So, I mean, what kind of a grade can you give him? And luckily, the Sox offense keeps powering on, so. A plus. <laughs> Thanks so much, Steve. All right, anytime. 
I'm Nesson.com Red Sox beat writer Sam Galanis, and I'm here at Fenway Park where one question everyone's been asking is should David Ortiz reconsider retirement? David Ortiz is insistent that the 2016 season will be his last, despite the fact he's off to perhaps the best start of his career. At 40 years old, the Red Sox slugger still is at the top of the MLB leaderboards and seems to rise on the all-time list every game. Plus, Ortiz still has a club option on his contract for 2017, but Red Sox management has been keeping mum on what they plan to do with it. However, as much as the Fenway faithful would love to see Big Poppy crushing baseballs to the bleachers for years to come, it ultimately makes more sense for Ortiz to retire on his own terms. Let's start with David Ortiz. Are you the most important player? Are you the most valuable player? Start with home runs. We're going to go over under 37. Uh, he hit 37 last year, highest since 2006. What do you like on that one? I think I go slightly over. My only concern is he might not get enough at bats. Mm -hmm. He hasn't played uh, over 150 games since 09. I'm going to go under on this one. Uh, I kind of look at it and say at some point pitchers are going to figure this out and stop pitching to him. All right, moving on to Xander Bogarts, another guy you know looking like an all-star, maybe even an all-star starter. Uh, and he also hitting everything right now. Uh, batting average, you know, right around 340, 350 right now. We're going over under 335. What do you think? I'm actually going to go over on this one. I mean, from from June of last year till now, he's batting well over 300. He's destroying left-handers this season. Batting average over 450 against them. I'm going to go over. I think uh, I'm not crazy about this one because you look at his uh, batting average on balls in play. It's over 400. That's probably not very sustainable, but I look at his numbers and say his walk rate is up, so he's swinging at better pitches. He's making good contact. You look at the balls and play average, it's a little misleading because he's hitting everything hard. It's like, well, of course there's gonna, you know, he's going to get balls in play off the wall. Those are going to be hits, yeah, obviously. All right, now let's talk about the Red Sox offense as a whole. Obviously, the biggest strength of this team so far has been the offense. The scoring runs at, uh, you know, really a near-historic pace. Well, let's set 900 as the benchmark. No team scored 900 runs. The Blue Jays came close last season. The Red Sox have done it a handful of times in their, their entire, uh, entire history. Uh, what do you like? Uh, they're on pace right now to score about over 900, a little over 950 runs. Mm -hmm. So I, but I still go a little bit under. It's so hard to keep up that yeah. pace for an entire season. The last team to do was the uh, Yankees in 2009. Uh, the Blue Jays were unbelievable last year, and they got to 891. Um, as good as this Red Sox is, I think they can be consistent throughout the season. I just don't see this pace continuing. I think some guys like Jackie Bradley Jr. might come down to earth a little bit. Yeah. But overall, they're going to have a great offense. But 900 is a bit too high for me. All right, one more. Let's talk the Red Sox as a whole. We already talked the offense. Let's, let's bring everything into this one. We're, setting it, we're going over under on wins for the entire season. Real simple. We're going to set the number at 93. What do you think? I think they'll be a bit under. I mean, okay. the, the offense has been fantastic. I think that'll slow down a little bit. The concern for me is the pitching. Yep. Um, they had seven uh, seasons of 95 wins since 03 with similar offenses in most of those mm -hmm. years, but I think the pitching in those years was a, a bit better. I don't think they have the same starting rotation they did in those years. So I think they could get 90, 91, 92. I see them falling just short of that because of their pitching. I'm going under as well, right around the same ballpark. I think they get in the playoffs. They could even still win the division, but I'm looking at like a 91 and 71 team. Ricky, have you ever won a superlative back in your school days? I haven't. Uh, I'm pretty strong across the board, but I don't really specialize in any one area, so yeah, that's me, probably, me it works against me when it comes to the superlative game. <laughs> Somehow my class failed to recognize me as most likely to succeed. Imagine that. We all have our classes. All right, but we're going to hand out some superlatives to the Red Sox, so you ready for it? I want to start off with biggest surprise this season. Who is it? I'm going to go with a guy who we actually mentioned earlier in the show, and uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. I mean, we knew this kid had offensive potential. Basically, basically, when it came to him, it was, you know, can you get 230, 240 type production out of him because his defense is so good. I don't think anybody really anticipated him being this good. And like I said earlier, do I, do I expect him to keep up the pace he's on? Probably not. He's going to come down to earth a little bit. But what we've seen so far has just been above and beyond, you know, my wildest expectations. Yeah, JBJ looking awesome. And there's a lot of upside with this team, but they're not perfect. What's been the biggest disappointment? Uh, I'd have to say Clay Buckles. I mean, you, you looked at him. He has all the talent in the world. I mean, we've seen that before the season. He's just His career has been filled with peaks and valleys. And obviously right now he's in one of those valleys. I mean, this is a guy who, like I said, has all the talent. Had, you know, had that one season in 2013 where he looked like a legitimate ace. Really, they had a count on him to be the number two or number three coming into the season. Just hasn't really panned out. So that's pretty disappointing for a team that needs its pitching to improve, at least down the stretch and going into October. 
Well, now, obviously, we've seen a lot of great offensive production, but who would you name the best pitcher? Uh, this, you know, I don't think anybody really saw this one coming, but Stephen Wright. And really, he's done uh, nothing but perform when he's had the opportunity since he's been with the Red Sox. And he's kind of bailed them out at times when they've had inconsistent pitching. Uh, this is no disrespect to Rick Porcello, who's also having a good year so far. But yeah, Stephen Wright kind of bailed them out. And uh, we'll, I mean, we'll see how long it lasts. But so far, his track record indicates that this guy, he, I think he's got some staying power. He proved himself and he won a spot in the rotation. So I give him the nod. And the Sox success so far this season, definitely a good team effort. But who has been the most valuable piece? I really want to give it to Xander Bogats mostly because he plays defense as well. His defense has gotten so much better since he's even been in the league. But I'm going to give it to the, to the guy. I'm going to give it to David Ortiz. We've, we talked a lot about him and whether he should reconsider retirement and the, just the numbers he's putting up so far. He, in my, in my opinion, is just the guy that, he's kind of the, the straw that uh, stirs the drink, if you will. Uh, and he's the, you know, the best power hitting force in that lineup. And really, as he goes, the rest of this lineup kind of follows. So, so far, I'm going to give it a big pop, although everybody seems to be contributing. So I don't think you can really go wrong. There's a, there's a few guys you can pick for that. But yeah, I'll take Ortiz. All right. Well, good stuff, Ricky. And that will do it for the first episode of The Dish. I'm thinking maybe at the end of the MLB season, maybe we can do some superlatives for our, for our cast and crew here. Uh, sign me up. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's do this throughout the season. Right? You wanna, yeah. you well, we will have more episodes throughout the season, so make sure to keep it locked on Nissan.com.